Hello and welcome back to my workshop to part three of the making of this dollar okay, coin. Okay, so the first thing to do, uh, what I normally do anyway, is um, although it's not cold in this workshop today, um, I always make it, I, and I think it's good practice to um, just start the electronics up on the machine. Um, but first, you must have Mac 3 or NC Studio or whatever ever operating system you use uh, to, that needs to be up and running first and connected to the machine make sure that the reset safe is on in other words you'll see a, a message in Mark 3 running here I'll fetch you in for okay. a better look. You'll see here that the emergency mode active that must be actually you must be able to see that because Mark 3 within the program shuts any contact down from the um, from the, the CNC machine in other words the CNC machine is not live it's not given any commands it's actually shut down that is the state that you need to start your CNC machine up okay in. so we'll we'll just fire the machine up I have uh, my CNC connected up to a a dead man switch here on the side of the cabinet which houses the computer so we'll just start it up that noise in the background that's the circulation air circulation fan through the electronics of the CNC machine right we've been running now for about 10 minutes so all the electronics are up to should we say working temperature it's just a nice practice to enable you to move the machine in other words make it active uh, you need to press on the reset button here within Mac 3 and now the machine and the computer are linked together uh, you can now operate it now you can either operate this or you can pendant. operate it uh, via the arrows keypad. on the keypad will move the X direction Y direction and the page up page down will operate the Z axis. So we'll just bring the, the gantry all the way up now to the home position at this uh, far front corner. And we'll make it move it a little faster than that. So you press shift and then the arrow. So it's now come up against the soft limits now and it automatically stops there, it won't go any further. You heard Mac 3 uh, make a, a, an alarm sound that was telling me it's on the limits. Um, I think it's, it's already on the limit for the, the X this way. And um, page up, where's page up? There we go, page up. So now I know it's in its home position. That's so. When you hear, hear or see uh, any information about the machine home position, this is the position of the uh, spindle or the rotor head comes to, which is normally this far front corner with a, a rotor, um, so you can change the tool. Uh, it's the most convenient place. Uh, I know that. CNC mills or, uh, normally have the home position in the um, far back left hand corner but with rotors it's slightly different. Now then, this particular um, spindle or rotor, uh, this is a 2.2 kilowatt. Now the 2.2 kilowatts uh, rotors have a larger um, chuck as it were actually for a router this is called a collet this is an uh, re 20 collet i believe uh, from memory um this you you can put anything from uh well a three millimeter all the way up to half inch shank or 12.75 millimeter shank uh tool so anything really from this size 
to this size. Now that is the my preferred um, router then or spindle head. Um, normal standard um, 1.5 kilowatt. Uh, they come with an RE11 collet. I'll show you what a collet is now. That's the collet there. It's, taught, it's a type of chuck. Now I'll take this one off and uh, I'll show you exactly what's inside this one. But the collets for the 1.5 kilowatt are very much smaller and the maximum size that they will take is this. That's uh, a six millimeter or quarter inch. Uh, so my preference, uh, you, you know, you, you, it opens up a, a wider world for you, is 2.2 uh, kilowatt um, with a, an RE20 collet chuck. Um, so whoever you're ordering your machine off, that's the one I suggest you uh, you order with it. So. There's two spanners, one, one spanner holds the shaft, the other spanner undoes the chuck. So it just comes off like this. And this is the setup. Okay, so just pull that out of there. That's a uh, five or six mil? Five mil? Five mil, end mil. And it comes out of there like that. There's a taper inside this one, in, inside this, this nut that matches up with the taper here and as it squeezes up, oh there's a taper inside the, inside the shaft of the, the spindle as well and as it squeezes this in it collapses on the, 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 the tool inside here and also um, this taper here, this taper here uh, matches up with the taper inside here and the taper inside the, the spindle and it all locks everything up together which is what you want. Okay so in our case what we want to do um, we are going to use a collapsible sleeve like that but this little this little tiny cutter this, this is an engraving cutter that is going to be put inside there, like so. Just as much of the shank in, in there as you can get. Okay. Then you get your, your nut. It's been cleaned out. Make sure it's seated in there really well. And then that goes inside there, like so you see and the whole lot goes into the into the router and gets tightened up which is what we're going to do right now so you seat it on the thread there like so turn it up so as you can go with your hands and you put a spanner on the shaft now you don't have to over tighten this, it's just nip it up like that. So there you are. I said to how to change uh, a tool or cutter on a CNC router. So now we'll find our zero point on the material. Okay, so I have brought the cutter over close to the material. And I'm just using the um, keypad here to zero the tool to the work. Need a little bit more light, I think. I think I can see. 
it might take a bit of time. You know, you really find out when you're getting old whether you're going to use something like this to be able to see whether you're exactly on point. In our case, we are. Okay, this was a little bit easier. This is, no, we, we found the X and Y um, zero position in relation to our work. So the next one is the Z. That was a little bit easier. You don't have to see it with your eyes so much as feel it. Now I'm within, I'm within about 10 thou, but because this is such a small piece of work, we have to be extremely accurate. We have to be within a thou. So, let's just bring it down. And the best method I have found with a piece of paper is just get the piece of paper underneath the tool, and just very quietly, bring the tool down. Oh, that's it. Do that again. Oh, there we go. There you go, just grabbed it there. So that now is exactly the start of the program and the zero coordinate of the work. Right, so having found a zero point of the work in relation to the tool, what you do then in Mac 3 is come up here to the DROs, which is Digital Readouts. Uh, we're not going to worry about the fourth axis, it's not connected. So what we're going to do, we're going to come to these row boxes here that are now red and we're going to go zero, zero, zero. So now the program and computer and machine know exactly where the start of that work is. The zero point. We just made the zero point. That's how to zero your machine. And I'll mention something else. This is the work offset. Do you remember a few minutes ago when we was talking about the home position? That's where you change a tool and the machine home there. This now is the work offset. It is offset from the home position. It is as simple as that. So in, G, in the G code, this is called G54, I think. I'll have to look that up, but I think it's G54. Um, offset. So that is how to set up a work offset, or indeed your job zero position. Okay, so now we're going to load the G code for the coin into Mac 3. Now, so we, what we do, we bring the cursor up here to the, this top corner which says File. Press on that. It's the first box that comes up says Load G code. There. And it's found my uh, storage device. So I'll just double click on this now. And it's probably going to take some time to actually load it. 